Welcome to The Authentic Spiritual Journey, a weekly podcast featuring real and practical spiritual conversations from diverse perspectives here on the Experience of the Soul podcast channel. Today, episode 238, Allow Yourself to Dream. And now your host, Reverend Cynthia Alice Anderson. Hello and welcome to The Authentic Spiritual Journey. My name is Cynthia Alice Anderson. I'm the host and I'm here today in 818 Studios with my producer. Good morning, everybody. This is Dave Croft and welcome back to another Boom. episode of The Authentic Spiritual Journey. As always, as always, I want to wish you uh, or I hope you had a good weekend and welcome you to a brand new week as we settle into January. Uh, just really happy to be with you today. Thanks for joining us. I know you have a lot of options out there. There are a lot of podcasts and everything and and uh, yeah. chances are, you know, you probably maybe went to church yesterday or whatever. I know you have a ton of options out there, but I thank you for spending part of your day here with us today. Yes. And again, Happy New Year. I'm probably the only one still saying that to you. <laughs> but we're, we're, you know, last week we did the show about inten spiritual intention, not mm -hmm. resolution. That's right. And, and, for, for those of you who may have missed it because of the holiday, I want to encourage you to go back and, and listen. And I, I'll be honest, friends, I have learned that uh, sometimes I can be a little too uh, too humble about the show <laughs> and not advertise it enough and say enough about it. But I'm so proud of the work we do, and I'm certainly proud to work with Dave and the professionalism he has and the great sound quality that you get in our camaraderie and relationship mm -hmm. because... We really do this in service to the listener. We're not making millions over here. Uh, but uh, certainly we have an income because we believe in that exchange of energy. But we're really here as a service to you. And we really hope that you're listening, dialing in on a regular basis, because that's how you're going to get the most out of it. Yeah, that's you right. know. That's right. Yeah, it's this is a real pleasure to do it, and uh, you know we record first thing Monday morning, and it's yeah. yeah I look forward to it every every Monday. Me too. Uh, I, yep. I'll tell you what was strange was, you know, we recorded several episodes at the end of 2022 so that we can have a nice chunky break. But it's nice to be back. It's good to be back. I yeah. I'm saying that as if. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Yeah, yeah that's good great. To be I, I totally agree, Dave. I totally agree. And it's great to be back, back in the saddle again, mm -hmm. as I, uh, I love to say. But, you know, I heard it said in 12 Step many years ago when you, uh, and it was about consistency in attending meetings. And somebody said to me, you know, when you treat your recovery program like a drop in program, that's exactly what it is a drop in your life. Mm hmm rather than being the way you live. And this is what I think about spirituality. I've, I've noticed recently there are a lot of people that really don't want to do the spiritual work, but as soon as they need a minister or help, my phone rings. And I'm happy to help. I'm happy to be of service. I love supporting people. And there is work for you to do in the meantime. <laughs> and that's what today's about. I'm not going to let you out of it. Honestly, friends, I believe we are not called high enough today. I think uh, boy, I'm not sure if I'm going to enter into some deep territory on some of the cultural things I'm seeing. I, I may do that this year because I do have a deep concern in how a lot of us are not living on purpose. I have a deep concern about not being able to speak the truth when the truth needs to be spoken, mm -hmm. right? So I am feeling excited about this new year. I'm feeling excited about the dreams, the goals, the desires that I know are working in your heart because they're working in mine. And, you know, I just started the Dream Big Live Big program. And if you if you still want to get in, I do record the 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 class. You could this is the very, very last week to get in. Otherwise you will have missed way too much for it to make any sense. But Today, our title is what, Dave? I just realized we're already almost <laughs> five know, minutes in and with no title. Today's title is Allow Yourself to Dream. Mm -hmm. Allow Yourself to Dream. Yeah. Well, okay. So deep breath, friends, because I'm going to launch in. <laughs> so I spoke last show about working with children. And one of the reasons I love to work with kids is they have this ability to believe. This It's a naivete. I, I believe it's why Jesus said, uh, 
to enter the kingdom, you must become as a little child, right? You, you, in other words, you have to be able to have a childlike belief to accomplish anything, really. It, it's one of the reasons I love the Ted Lasso, the show. I don't know oh, it's uh, great. Dave, yeah. if you're a fan, but belief, belief is really huge. But, but why I'm doing this this year and every year I do this because I'm, I see the whole year spread out before me and I say, who am I called to do and be this year? And then I get busy. So last week we talked about setting your intention about, you know, getting clear, taking some time. And this week is about really starting to get move into action. This week is about allowing yourself to dream. And that's our title, right? Allow yourself to dream. And the reason this step is super, super important is that most of us don't realize we have stopped dreaming. And I'll tell you, it's the saddest thing I see in my work when people have stopped dreaming. They have stopped believing that something is still for them to do and be, for them to co- accomplish. They have stopped believing that they are worthy to live their dreams. And they feel so pushed down by the world, all they're doing is getting by. All they're doing is getting a paycheck and buying stuff. And friends, that's about the saddest existence you can have. Because as soon as you don't have that stuff, if you're not doing anything spiritual, you're not believing in yourself, depression, anxiety, uh, physical problems, all kinds of things start setting in to the mind and body. All kinds of things. And so... I'm not saying this to scare you. I'm saying this is a fact, right? So what we are seeking to do is be proactive in creating the life we want to live. So what is that life for you? I want you to allow yourself to dream about what that is. Allow yourself to dream about what that is. It might be career-based. It might be relational. It might be health or finance. What I want you to allow yourself to do is dream about that. What would you want if you could have it? What would you want if you could have it? You know, some of us were raised that you weren't allowed to want things that you could not afford. That was very, very common in where I grew up. You know, I had a friend that was just whipped with a Sears catalog because she was looking at a Sears catalog and circling the things she wanted. So some of us grew up with those kind of limits. I I grew up with, why even bother dreaming for things you can't afford? Like, why even, like, I didn't even consider seriously going to the college I really wanted to. Mm-hmm. Like I really wanted to go to North Carolina School of the Arts, or I wanted to go to Berkeley, but we couldn't afford it, so I didn't even bother to dream about it. You know, that exactly what I'm talking about. Exactly, right. But now, Dave, now in your life, you're always moving forward and always mm-hmm. dreaming of new things, yep. right? So, real Absolutely. different place than you were then. Hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. And I'm lifting that up only because for our listeners, I want you to really hear just because that has been your experience doesn't mean it has to stay your experience. And and so I think a lot of people think, well, I'm not going to dream because, well, what if I'm disappointed? <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're disappointed already. So what have you got to lose? You know, I, I think, too, that the dream of something more, and for me, it's being more, kind of pulls me forward. It pulls me forward. And years ago, I had a a dream of having lunch with the Dalai Lama. (laughs) This is really funny. I I can't remember if I've told this on the show or not. I don't think think I have. Have you ever heard this, Dave? No, this doesn't ring a bell. It doesn't. Well, okay. So I I was talking with Edwin Gaines, a great prosperity teacher who wrote the book, Four Spiritual Laws. No, wait. What is it called? (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) Anyway, it's a great prosperity book by Edwin Gaines. Um, I was about to give my title of my book, Mine's Seven Spiritual Laws of Release, which is a prosperity book. Uh, 
But anyway, hers is a four law process of prosperity. And I, I just for the life of me can't remember the Yeah, title. the four, it's four spiritual laws of prosperity. It is four yep. spiritual laws of prosperity. Okay, okay. But I was with Edwin and I heard her say, you know, why don't you allow yourself to dream big? Just, you know, what if you wanted to have lunch with the Dalai Lama? Have you ever allowed yourself to think about that? And I thought, God, that is wild. I'm going to, I'm going to try that. I'm going to try that. See if I can manifest that. Well, you know, 30 days go by, 60 days go by, and I'm really thinking about this. Like every day, I was really surprised at how attached I became to this dream. And come to find out, well, I had, so I had, um, I had worked with Dr. Gandhi, Dr. Arun Gandhi, the grandson of Gandhi, and he had a special representative in Scotland. Well, it turns out, as I had Dr. Gandhi at the church, that I was talking to this gentleman who, you know, was uh, did all his plans. It was his representative and everything in Scotland. He was traveling with him a little bit in the States. And as I got to know them, he told me that he was the personal representative for the Dalai Lama when he came to Scotland. And I said, what? <laughs> and he said, I will tell you, though, the best place to see the Dalai Lama is not in Scotland or in the U.S. It's in India. Anyway, <laughs> long story short, I actually was one degree away from the Dalai Lama. Well, then I had another situation like within 30 days of that where a dear friend who's a uh, a therapist in private practice uh, let me know that the Dalai Lama uh, knew through a source that the Dalai Lama had time in Arizona every year, that it was super private, and that one of his assistants she knew. And so I got that close to the Dalai Lama. And what was so interesting is when I thought about doing having lunch with him, I was like, you know what? I'm not going to bother this guy. But I, what I loved is that as I focused on something, I could see how easily it would manifest. Something that I thought was impossible. But I was just really guided not to go forward. It was like an experience to get me to realize I could manifest nearly any dream. And then I started writing down each day 10 impossible things. Now, why am I talking about 10 impossible things? You say, why on earth would you talk about, write down 10 impossible things? Because what I learned after about six months of doing it every single day is that nothing is impossible. Because things I put on that list I thought were utterly impossible, I started manifesting. Why am I saying all this? Friends, we ourselves have created this glass ceiling in our lives. It's totally self created. I'm not saying it's not because of your family of origin. Of course it is. It's being raised with the idea that you are limited. But what my work is about is saying we live in a finite world, but at the level of the soul, we are infinite, which means we have the power to bring forward, to bring down from the invisible into the visible whatever it is we dream and desire. I mean, within some reason, right? <laughs> I had a, a dear friend, I was talking to him, this is years ago, uh, a African-American minister, his name was S.T., S period, T period, that was his name, S.T. And he said to me, well, I mean, the Bible does say with God, all things are possible, but I couldn't be a Japanese businessman. <laughs> and I said, well, the fact is you could, you could move to Japan. You could possibly become a citizen. He goes, oh my God. I said, so I couldn't be a Japanese businessman, probably. I said, but you know, there are surgeries for that now. <laughs> Started laughing. Started laughing. I said, that's not a, I said, that's not within the realm, though, of what I'm talking about. The idea with God, all things are possible means as we seek to live a better life, as we seek to live our life's purpose, nothing will be impossible, impossible for us because we're sourced in God. 
And I could tell you personally, story after story after story, but I want you to begin to do your work of dreaming. Allow yourself to dream. If you've never done it, a great way to start is to write 10 impossible things every day. 10 impossible things every day. I promise you it will not make you sad. Almost everybody that says it says, I just don't get it. Why should I write 10 impossible things? I said, because you're going to learn they're not impossible. The idea of impossible is all in your mind. I just had somebody write me a note the other day. By the way, I'm living the life of my dreams. Since I've taken that class with you, I've traveled the world. I've done a book. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. And this is how I'm living my dreams now. Thank you so much. And I said, well, I love hearing this. And will you come to my first class to talk to the students about how you've done it? Oh, I'm here to help. Absolutely. I believe in this 100%. She said, I never dreamed what was possible. But her mom instilled in her the idea. She said, honey, you've always got to go beyond the block. Right. She grew up in a small, you know, area of New York. You always got to go beyond the block. There's something beyond the block. Right. So she did from a young age have an idea that growing and moving were good, were helpful. So allowing yourself to dream. What's so amazing is simply not editing your dreams is super empowering because as you do this every day, this 10 impossible things, what you're going to start to see is that you're going to start to see that, yes, they're not impossible, but you're also going to start to see some kind of pattern in what your desires really are, right? And so a lot of people say to me, well, when I write this down, do I have to worry about, is it from the ego or from my soul? I go, no. Just write it down. Just write everything down that comes to mind. Because sometimes your ego needs to have its day, friend. I don't expect that you're going to sit in silence every time you want to move forward and go, okay, what does God want of me? We all have dreams and desires. We're all here in the human body to learn, to grow, to be loved, to love, to experience abundance and prosperity, to experience health and wholeness. I mean, we are humans on this journey right? So we are going to have human wants, needs, and desires. That's perfectly good. That's great. You may want to have a baby. You may want to, uh, you know, own the home of your dreams and live on a houseboat. You may want to travel the world. These are all wonderful desires. But if you start giving yourself permission to dream without all these limits, you're going to start to see what's really important of those things. And then you can start to begin to dial it down and give those specific things some really strong energy for you to move forward on them. I hope this is making sense, friends, what I'm saying, that simply the act of allowing yourself to dream is going to begin to move you forward. So you don't feel so stuck. The crazy thing is, often we feel stuck and we don't even know it. It's like, oh, I'm doing the same thing over and over and over. You know, I do a variety of things. And I ran into a friend the other day. He lives within a mile of me. And he was just walking by my my house. And I happened to be out there. And we had a you know great connection. He was asking what I'm doing. And I said, well, <laughs> I'm doing a variety of things. I'm doing a variety of things. And he goes, and I was just sharing with him some of the things, you know, and he goes, you know what? That sounds like a lot of fun. I go, you know what? It is. And you know what's really fun is that I'm getting ready to take a whole weekend off and spend it in St. Augustine, a town I love. And, you know, because this was around Christmas, go see the Christmas lights and just hang out. You know, I said, I have a great life. And it was just, great to just be able to say that. It's like, I don't need to feel bad about it. I have a great life. Yeah. I just, yeah. It, and it's a lot of fun. And I know this year there's going to be more fun and more things. So I love to do a variety of things. Now for you that you might say, oh, that sounds exhausting. All the stuff <laughs> you do. So you're going to have different dreams, goals, and desires. You know, I have a sibling 
Her idea of fun is being home all the time. She's like my polar opposite. And I talk to her nearly every day and she's always cooking something or making something or whatever. So she's like my opposite in the family. She's scared to go anywhere and I love to travel the world, you know. For years, she barely drove herself even. And, you know, I've been on my own since I was 17. I started working when I was 11 years old. Actually, when I was six years old, I shined shoes. Right? So, I mean, I've always been this big adventurer and go-getter. Well, what is your dream and desire? It might be totally different than mine uh, because I had somebody say, well, I don't have goals like yours. I go, good, because they're mine. <laughs> you know, you don't have to have my dreams and goals. Have your own. Have your own. But like, if your idea of heaven is a cabin in the mountains, well, go get it. You know, one of my students, uh, and I have permission to share, when she started the Dream Big Live Big program, it was to go back to work, to have a cabin in the woods. I mean, it was like three or four different things. You know, sell her home that she had raised her kids in. All those things manifested. She's now living in a cabin in Tennessee with her husband, the house sold for a great price. And she has a brand new job that she loves in the field she's been in for 30 years. So every single dream has come true. Mm. Everyone. But she also did the work. Every time I talked to her, she was saying, okay, here's where I am. Here's what I'm doing this week. And sometimes it, even the job, she had to pivot back into the career she left. She had to leave that career for a while because she was burned out. And then she was like, I feel really called into this career. I said, let's help you go get that. It, there's no limit on what you, and now wonderful money, wonderful job, great benefits, no weekends. I mean, just every single thing she wanted. And, you know, there's also the, the aspect I've noticed in my life, certain things manifest easier than others. And so as you're dreaming, if if you know there's certain things that manifest super easily, but you want to work on new stuff, well, that's probably where you want to put your energy because it's where your blocks are. You know, there's one I've struggled a little bit with, and I'm I'm going to get some coaching on myself for my dream. I, I I'm like, you know what? There's something about this I'm not seeing. And my dear friend, who's a, min a retired minister, is going to just give me a little a little coaching on that. I said, you know what? I think I need a session with you. And he said to me, anything and always for you, the answer is yes. <laughs> I said, well, I mean, I'm paying you for your time. I don't care if you are my best friend. I'm <laughs> paying you for your time. And because let's keep this, let's keep this what this is. And I need your help on this issue. I really need to figure out this next step in this one area. Right. So it's cool to very cool to get support. But my concern for all of us is allowing ourselves to dream with no editing. Because the, the first thing is people want to shut it down. And so remember, just because you're dreaming about it doesn't mean it absolutely becomes a goal. You're just allowing yourself to think bigger thoughts about yourself, more expansive thoughts about yourself. It was fun for me to think about having lunch with the Dalai Lama. And I thought, yeah, I don't really need that. Yeah. I mean, cool dream. And I think I'll put my energy elsewhere. Yeah. And that was uh that was that that was helping you break out of your own limitations. It was. It wasn't it wasn't actually about having lunch with the Dalai Lama. Correct. It was about uh, expanding yep. your uh possibilities. Yeah. It was. And I did send him a letter. Uh, a couple times and around Pulse, I sent another after the Pulse shooting in Orlando, what, seven years ago now, yeah. almost. I sent him a letter and asked for his support and prayer. Uh, so I've done a variety of things. And I think had I not done the other work in consciousness, I would never even thought to do that. Mm. Um, years ago, I wrote Maya Angelou a letter and I was surprised when I got a letter back. That one of my dreams was to connect with her, and I was able to do that. And you know, many of you may yeah. not know that Maya Angelou became a unity minister, and we were even going to have her at CCU Orlando, but she passed away before she could come. She had agreed. So, literally, 
you know, we would have been side by side with Maya Angelou, which seemed completely impossible when I first thought about the idea. You know, and I followed up when after she passed, I followed up with Oprah and I didn't even get a word back. <laughs> now, Maya Angelou got back to us. Yeah. You know, I sent her a poem I wrote about her mm. and just a beautiful response from her. I remember this civil rights activist, Claudette, uh, Claudette Colvin, and that I had contacted, handwritten letter back, you know. So what I've discovered is that as I allow myself to dream, I'm starting to play with the big kids. That's what, that's what separates successful and non-successful people. They believe they can. They believe they're worthy of it. So several years ago, I was at a restaurant and I had on black pants. And at the restaurant, when they were, uh, when they brought our food and everything, they, they brought us napkins these white starch napkins and i'd heard a guy a couple tables over ask for a black napkin and i was like i would never number one know to do that but number two that sounds really rich and that just sounded fun to me and i was like this white napkin is actually marking my black pants like it was leaving like foof, like it was leaving foof, like foofies on your right right and i had an event to go to where I was going to be speaking. I couldn't have white stuff on my pants. So uh, so I said to the server, may I have a black napkin? She said, absolutely, ma'am, of course. And I thought, is the littlest things hmm. where I believe I'm worthy that it is like a such a difference in how I feel and how I'm treated. And it's simply believing that I am worthy to receive it. I had to have someone else show me about the black napkin. I didn't know that existed. But he was like, oh, I need a black napkin. Absolutely, sir. I am I am today years old when I realized that was even an option. <laughs> exactly. I would never you see have what thought, I mean? I would have just kept it on the table like a, like a Neanderthal, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> well, don't you remember that time I told you about going into that really cool store in Orlando called Track Shack and they mm -hmm. like measured my feet and told me why something was hurting my feet because there's a whole new way to tie your shoelaces. And yep. I was like, what? <laughs> you know? Yep. But see, if I'm not willing to learn, if I'm not open to grow, if I'm not willing to believe that I have a right for my feet not to hurt, I'm just going to suffer. <laughs> yep. You see, so it's like these little things. That's what I'm saying that as you start to open your mind and allow yourself to dream, you're going to really experience more of the good that the universe has for you. Yeah. And friends, it's fun. That's the thing I want you to really hear. It's fun. It's exciting. And it is, um, it gives you energy to begin to manifest and live your dreams. It really, really does. Every time something manifests, I, I mean, I'm just laughing like, oh, my gosh, like if you would have told me when I was seven years old, growing up in Red Oak, Georgia, sitting there in the Methodist Church and all the various things I experienced with being around a lot of partiers and drugs and alcohol. If you would have told me what my life would be about today and you would have told me that I was going to be helping hundreds of thousands of people around the world, I would have said, you're crazy. But you know what? I absolutely know now, if I can do it, you can do it. Simply the belief and allowing yourself to dream. The, you know, that old song, dream the impossible dream. That you allow yourself to dream of what's possible for you. It's going to help you move forward just with that. If that was all you did, unedited, it would still help you move forward. If you follow through on the podcast and you take one of my Dream Big Live Big courses, uh, you're you're going to have, have guaranteed manifestations because it is working with spiritual principle to help you manifest. And it's not just about having, it's about who you are being in the world, right? It's who you're being in the world. So this is fun, fun stuff, allowing yourself to dream. So your mission, should you choose to accept it over the next week, is simply allow yourself to dream. A great way to do it is every day, write 10 impossible things. If that doesn't work for you, simply sit and allow yourself to write down things that you want to accomplish, 
things that you see yourself doing, things that you have always dreamed about doing, and then come back next week and we'll talk about some next steps. So we thank you for listening, friend. I hope during this week you do allow yourself to dream. I hope you can get behind your own energy and your own passion and believe in what's possible for you. We're honored to support your journey, dear friend, and we look forward to seeing you next week. Blessings on the journey. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of The Authentic Spiritual Journey here on the Experience of the Soul podcast channel. This channel is made possible because of listeners just like you. If you would like to support the channel with your tax-deductible contribution on an ongoing basis or through a one-time gift, head over to experienceofthesoul.com slash support. The Authentic Spiritual Journey is copyright 2023, Cynthia Alice Anderson, all rights reserved. Our theme music is composed by Dave Croft and used with permission from RR Hot Publishing. The Experience of the Soul podcast channel is a production of 818 Studios.